Hello YouTubers, hopefully everybody's doing just great. I uh, thought this would be a good night to come in the garage and do a little work. It's been a little cold out, so this is a great opportunity for me to work on my exhaust. This is a 4.6 2000 Expedition, and a lot of these mountaineers and explorers from 2000 to 2005, they always have a problem with the exhaust. Uh, this one here uh, has the EGR tube that runs down and goes out on this side and the passenger side. Of course, it's a little dark here. I apologize that, but this is the side we're not going to be working on. It's actually the other side. Uh, a lot of people end up working on this side because there's an EGR tube. Like I said, it goes down and it gets uh, bad and people have to replace it. Uh, thankfully for me, uh, this side is okay. My EGR is uh, fine. My problem was on this side, I had an exhaust leak uh, when I started it up. It sounded like popcorn. When you first started up and it was called, it would go pop, 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 pop. And it turned out I had an exhaust leak right about there on that manifold. And you probably still see some of the black up there. So I decided, you know what, I had to put a, uh, put a um, caliper uh, line on here and all that, flexible brake line. So I thought this would be a good time to get in here and tackle this. Now, I'll be honest, um, I really didn't think I would be able to get this exhaust off to be able to put new gaskets in it. I was sort of shocked, and I'll show you, I'll kind of walk you through the process real quick, and I'll try not to make this video too long for you. Give you some idea how I did it, and maybe this will help you out. Now, when I got under here, I took out the plastic shroud that's in here. It just gives you a lot more room, and besides, if you need to change your EGR valve, uh, not your EGR valve, your oxygen sensor, it's real easy to get to. And matter of fact, this one was almost ready to fall out. Whoever had the vehicle before me did not have this tight. I just basically unscrewed this with my fingers. And, Put it off to the side, so if you need to change your EGR valve, it's uh, not EGR, why do I call that EGR valve? It is a oxygen sensor. Okay, Nathan, try it one more time. Oxygen sensor. <laughs> it's Monday. So, uh, kind of threw that off to the side, and I got to thinking, well, uh, why don't I just go ahead and try to take off some of these uh, bolts on the uh, manifold. So now what I gotta do is grab my extension here and some uh, couple sockets. My bolts on my manifold were basically a half inch and are these guys here and a lot of you know what I'm talking about. These are these little studs and they got little nuts that you uh, tighten down. And I actually got every one of these out. How I got it out, I used an extension. Well, uh, I'm going to say deep well. I really didn't need the extension. And uh, I found the socket and I made sure that that nut would fit in there without too much play or slack. And uh, one at a time, as I worked my way across, I eventually broke them loose. And all I did was take my socket, made sure it was on the nut, tapped it a couple of times, and I used a pipe, which is uh, kind of sitting right here, to help me give a little leverage on the, uh, extent, on the, on the um, ratchet, just to kind of help me uh, break it loose, because I didn't want to start twisting real hard. And, and breaking everything and that's how I broke them loose one at a time I slowly just kind of tugged on them until I broke them loose and uh, the only one I had problems with was down here on the bottom and I'll have to get under the car under the uh, exp uh, the uh, mountain whatever this thing is called the expedition <laughs> and show you where that is but uh, my main point is I wanted to go ahead and just put brand new gasket on the side well I go to the parts store nobody makes an entire gasket. You have to buy them now like this. Especially on this model, the 2002 uh, Explorers and Mountaineers on the way all the way up to 2010 or who knows, the 4.6s, uh, they have an entirely different gasket but this year until 2002 they are individual so I had to go out and buy you know a kit. It wasn't very much, it was only $13 and I picked up brand new studs and nuts these are my old ones, uh, plus some extra ones I had laying around. I was going to reuse them, but I thought, yeah, for $10, just put new ones in it. And I thought, well, you know, it would be easier just to put a gasket in, one big piece, and slide it in there. Well, no one, like I said, no one makes it. So I'm just going to go ahead, one at a time, drop it in like this, put a stud in there. I don't know if you can see because of light. And just kind of put those in one at a time and start my, uh, let me switch my hand around here with my camera real quick. I'm just going to drop them in. Gee, sorry about that. One at a time, like this. And start a nut in them. Put a bolt on it, like right about there. And uh, well, you get the idea. And I'm going to do them all clear across there until I get every one of them in. 
Now I know it's gonna be a slow process, but as I get one of those started, those gaskets, I'm gonna go ahead and hand screw one of these guys in, and that should keep them in place until I get the top row bolts in, then I'll push the manifold in, I'll, I'll just kind of push it inward, and I'll start the bottoms on the bolts on the bottom, and hopefully these will go in through the bottom part of this gasket, and uh, I'll have a new set of gaskets on there. Now the chisel you see right there, uh, that's my little spacer right now. I've just kind of got it uh, manifold uh, apart right there, because what I did, uh, this may help you, I took a piece of sandpaper, wound it up, like this, and I went behind the manifold. Let me switch hands again with my camera. I put it on a tripod, but I have, I have absolutely no room right here where I'm at in the corner. My garage is small. I took a piece of sandpaper like this, and stuck it in, in there, and I kind of just kind of sanded on both sides of the head and the intake. Just did that until I got everything nice and clean on both sides, and I took my little mirror, which is setting right here, and that way I can kind of see in behind there and I got all the gasket material off on both sides and I know the gasket's off because here's the old gasket, what's left of it, the four pieces that was on it. Very cheap, very shoddy, but uh, once I get those on, I'll be very happy. This side will be nice and quiet. This was the only exhaust leak I had. And uh, once I do that, I'll just put the oxygen sensor back in and I'll be pretty much done. Now, like I said, there's one exception. It was one bolt I couldn't get on the bottom because of that uh, motor mount. There's a bracket that bolts on the block. And let me crawl underneath and I'll show you real quick. Oh yes, and before I crawl under, I did disconnect the wiring harness from the starter and I pulled the starter out just so I'd have a little extra room and I pushed the wiring harness up out of the way. It actually runs right down through here. It snakes down behind the manifold. And there's a little bolt right there, a nut and a bracket that's uh, wrapped around that harness. It keeps it from hitting this manifold so it doesn't catch on fire, melt, melt it or anything. It's just pulled off to the side. That's the only fly in the ointment and you do have to take the starter off, but I'll show you that real quick. Okay, yeah, just a quick footnote. Now what I did discover after I put this back together, um, if you uh, take a pry bar and kind of pry right there and, and push up on that manifold and put a socket right there, that will lift that engine up just about a quarter of an inch, and you may be able to get those two bottom bolts that I told you about on the bottom, the manifold that were hard to get into because of that uh, motor mount uh, frame. Try that. I've got that up on the uh, socket right now, and I was able to actually get one of those bolts on. Uh, so you may not have to take the starter off, but try this first. Try to pry up on the engine just a little bit, and get your socket, and put it under the manifold, and get your hand up under there, and... Uh, socket and you may be able to tighten those two bolts up there that are pretty close to the back of that bracket of the uh, motor mount so I uh, thought I'd just kind of share that I kind of discovered this at the end uh, when I was just about done when I had trouble with one of the bolts and I just thought well what if I lift up on that manifold there and do that and it did and I could lift the engine up a little bit so it did help so try that it might give you enough room to get those two bolts on there without taking the starter off Okay, there's a starter. Like I said, I did have to take it off. And uh, the reason why I had to take it off, I'll have to set my light here and give you, an, give you a look up under here. If you look closely, you'll see that motor mount bracket right there. Right there is the bolt that I had a problem getting out. I could not get my socket on that because that manifold sits so close to that bracket, my socket would not go between the bolt, the nut I was trying, the stud I was trying to take off, and that bracket. So what I did, I took a couple of bolts out of this bracket. There's one right there. I took completely out, and there's two on the other side of that mount. You can get from up up front, and I'll show you. And once I get them loose, I just took a, a pipe or a, or, or a uh, a breaker bar, and I put it behind it and kind of moved it down a little bit. It, it'll move maybe a half inch, and that's how I got my socket in there. Once you take the starter off and look in there, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. That's the only way I could get that bolt out. Now, some of the other trucks and mountaineers and explorers, you may not have that problem. For some reason, this expedition did have a problem with that being so close to that manifold. Maybe it's just excess rust. I don't know. But that's how I got it out. And like I said, the only downside is you do have to take the starter off. And if you're taking these starters off, you know how to take them off. They're pretty easy to take off once you get your fingers up on top of it and get those... Uh, bolts out.
All right, I'm going to show you the other two bolts. One is right there. There's that bolt on the bracket. And if I zoom back out and bend down just a little bit more, you'll see the second one, which is right there. Actually, I'm sorry, that one there and the one right below it, right there. Once you just loosen those up a couple of turns, put an extension in there, then that bracket will kind of move around and you can uh, take that bolt out from up here. And uh, once you get it out, then, let's see if I got my lights shining. This manifold will pull back enough, if you can see, to get a gasket in there. Now, I could have taken those studs off right there where that white where that pipe connects to the uh there's well there's a little donut gasket there or they call it a uh i'm not sure the exact, exact terminology for it flange gasket i guess uh it's not leaking but i could have got those two bolts on the back there off the studs but i just would have broke this off and uh i thought well if it's not leaking what's the point to taking it off when i can just go ahead and put my new uh manifold gaskets and behind the manifold and uh, I don't have to worry about it. Now in worst case if you have to take this manifold off and you strip out the bolts and you just take your uh, saw saw or something and you can get in there and just cut these bolts off and take this manifold out like that. Granted you'll have to get another manifold but uh, that's that's about it. So what I'm going to do is uh, I, hope, I hope I've explained this uh, reasonably well to you guys that are working on these manifolds. I find that taking these bolts out of the aluminum block um, these guys here, they come out much easier when the engine's cold. And like I said, make sure once you get a socket on there, make sure it fits snug, and these will eventually come out. And I did put a little oil on it, but it didn't make much difference. <laughs> it, it's just a thing that you think it works. But I did soak them a little bit in oil, and I don't think it helped. It just kind of made a mess. But they did all come out, and I was really excited. And of course, the other side, like I said, the manifold is just fine. So what I'm going to do, I see, I think I've explained everything, and that's how I'm going to go ahead and put in my new uh, manifold gaskets. But I'll have to set the camera down and do this because I will have to use both my hands. Do these one at a time, clear across, and tighten them down, and I can start this up. So I'm pretty excited. So uh, if I get all these in, I'll come back and give you a look at it and give you a few tips and maybe uh, start it up. And one other thing, when I was sanding, uh, putting this behind the manifold in the uh, head, I had a wet, I had a little wedge in here separating this uh, back like this, pulling it back, where I could actually work this up and down. It just made it a little bit easier. So, all right, let's go ahead and I'll go ahead and put all this together and we'll see what it looks like. All right, after about 20 minutes or so, I got all the studs in and you can see they're in. And the new gasket sitting behind there. See, there's one of the gaskets right there. And they were uh, pretty easy to put in. Now, uh, a couple of them on the bottom, I had to kind of get my hand in a weird angle and get up under there and start it. And these go in with a little uh, socket. I am using a, a six millimeter, uh, kind of a square head socket to put them in. And I'll tell you what, uh, by the way, these gaskets are supposed to be the new and improved gaskets for this exhaust system i don't know <laughs> that's what the guy told me now we'll crawl here real quick and i'll try not to make you dizzy as we wrap this up and there is the bolts on the bottom get my angle here right these are pretty easy to put in you can just get your hand up in there that's the one that's a little difficult and you can see how close that stud is sticking to that uh frame the back part of that uh bracket that's the issue i have but i can still tighten it up now then once i get the manifold tight i just kind of move this bracket and put that bolt back in its place there a little bit and tighten it down and put starter on it's done so uh there's a look at it from underneath but you can see the brand new gasket there there and kind of sticking out right there and and these and like i said the flange gasket's just fine but if I tried to take that nut off, it would just break that stud off and and you open up a can of worms. A lot of times these bolts uh, on the manifold, they don't come off that easy. You end up twisting them and breaking them, and I've broke lots of them before. And you have to sometimes try to tap them out or even sometimes extreme cases pull the head off. So that, you know, you just don't know. That's why it's very important to make sure you get a good grip on those bolts before you take them out. 
Just like I said, the key is to make sure you get a good firm socket on that rusty uh, stud and it should come off. Forget about trying to tap the top of this stud there, that little five point right there, forget that. There, in most cases that'll never work, you just gotta get a socket on there. To break those loose, so now all I gotta do is go ahead and put my uh, bolts on there, tighten them all down. Put the O2 sensor in, put the starter on, we'll start it up for a little bit and give you a nice look at it and listen to it for a second. But there you go, that's how you do it. So uh, hopefully this will help you guys out. So let me put it back together and we'll start it up. All right, folks, uh, it's running. And I gotta say, it sounds pretty amazing. Check it out. How quiet it is in here. I can actually talk. Got a little bit of smoke burning off there from the oil, but running pretty good. I got my leaks fixed. And it looks like, uh, Everything's okay. I'm very happy. So hopefully this will help you guys out if you're working on your exhaust. Give you some idea what you uh, may have to go through. I'm pretty happy. Yay! Alright, I'm very happy with it. So uh, hopefully if you guys are having a manifold problem on these uh, expeditions and Mountaineers and Ford Explorers, the four sixes and five fours, maybe this will help you out a little bit. But uh, if I ever run into an issue on the driver's side, if I decide to replace it, I'll let you guys know. I'll make another video. But I do have gaskets for this side. So, but I'll cross my fingers. Hopefully it won't go bad. <laughs> but everything else is in really good shape. All right, thanks for watching, everyone. If you have any comments or uh, questions, I'll try to answer them. But my uh, channel's getting pretty busy now. It's getting kind of hard to keep up with all the comments and questions. But I'll do my best. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody, and take care, and talk to you later.